Hello, how's it going? Welcome back to another Godot video. So what I've been doing recently is, first of all, really, really enjoying learning Godot. This has actually been such a positive experience. I, I'll probably make a video on various bits that I like about Godot, but I won't waft on about that. But one of the things I've been doing is making little features, making little prototypes and experiments and things. And I just want to share this um, experiment. The topic of this video is how do we make animations, load them in from a sprite sheet and control them with keys. So we'll start up, load Godot, and we'll just make a new project. Yeah, we'll go in there. We'll call the project Godot. That sounds good. Create and edit. All right. So I'll go over to 2D. And I will make a, let's just go with a, a two-dimensional node. This is going to be my player. So I'll just rename that to player, save the scene. So this player will be an individual module that we can create and test. To start with, I'll just mm, actually do nothing right now. I'm just going to add a child node and that will be yeah, an animated sprite. So I'm not doing any collision stuff, no physics at the moment. I'm just testing the animation. So before I go and create this animated sprite, I should probably load in a sprite sheet. Here we go. I'll, I'll grab one of these sprite sheets, bring it in. So I just got this off open game art. If you're making little experiments, it's a great thing to do. Uh, if we zoom in, we have this character and this character has various poses. They run sort of across each row. Each row is a pose. Then the question is, how do we take these and form them into animations? And in Godot, this is actually super, super simple. What we can do is we'll go to this animated sprite 2D and it says here that we need to create a, um, an animation for it. That's fine. We'll just go down here on the side to animation and then to sprite frames, we'll click there and say new sprite frames. So then if we click on that sprite frames thing again, we get this little animation window up here. So, this is our default animation. We've currently got nothing. The way we can load this in from a sprite sheet is we just click this icon here that says add frames from sprite sheet. And then we select the sprite sheet in our resources, say open. And here we have it. So we just need to configure the grid. So if I count across, I'll find that I have eight horizontal images. Nice. And then I have eight vertical images. Great. But currently it says no frames are selected. This is up to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select some frames, select a full row and say, add those frames. And we can see now that a preview appears. Now this is a little hard to see. So first of all, I'm going to grab the player and group everything together so that when I move that node, It'll move everything with it. Just move this player over so they're somewhere in the center of the screen. And then if I go to the animated sprite and then to the node 2D. So this is a little, this is a little strange, I guess, but okay. Let's say we go to the player and the player has a transform. So I can, for instance, set the scale. Actually, maybe that's fine. Forget what I said. Okay, so run the current scene and we see the player there, they're scaled up. I'm actually gonna scale them up even more. Let's make that really big. Okay, great. There's a thing. So let's go back into editing the animation. I'll click on the animation. We've got our default animation here. I can just click play here to view the animation. It looks like this is a sort of idle animation and we're looking to our left. So I can just pause that. By the way, if I want to modify the animation speed, I can just change the frame rate. So now we're going at 10 frames per second, but that look, looks a little weird. 
I'm actually pretty happy with five frames per second, but just be aware that this is something that we have to play with. Additionally, we have this icon here, and this is the animation looping. So um, for instance, if we have a shooting animation, we don't wanna indefinitely shoot. We just wanna go once, so I can, oop, we idle once, but in this case, we do want the idle to loop. So what I'll do is also we can go here and set the name. So I'll say idle left. I'm quickly going to create all of these other animations. Okay, so what I just did, this is a good teachable moment, is I just click to add more frames but then it added them onto the current animation. So it's a great idea to click this icon to add a new animation and then add frames to that animation. Okay, so here's another thing to look at. Currently we have the walking animation, but you can see it's just a little too slow. So no problem. We have this available to modify. We can just change the animation speed, run that. You know, I'm pretty happy with that, but it does seem a little fast. So we can have always just modify to our heart's content, get the mix just right. Little slow, but I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so here we have the shooting animation. Now, if I play this, it'll just loop. It's going a little slow. So I'll just dial it up. Okay, 10 frames per second, that looks pretty good. And also I don't want it to loop, I just wanna play once. So we go play, bang, just like that. Awesome. Okay, so I've gone ahead and loaded in all of my animations. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is add some super simple logic just to play some of these animations and, and show how we can trigger them from code. So what I would need to do before I do that is I'm just gonna set up some input mapping so that when I press keys and things, stuff happens. Now, this is a place where I have to give, like I cannot give enough credit to Godot. The input mapping system is top notch. Okay, so here's how it works. Let's say we wanna move left. So I'm gonna make a new action called left. I'm gonna add that. And why not just add all the other actions to shoot and die. Okay, great. So let's go back to the left animation. Now I just click add here to add an event. And I can scroll through here to find the various events that I wanna to bind to this, but at the same time, this search bar is listening for input. So if I say I want A to be my left key, just press A, and it says, yep, A physical or A unicode, any of those, and you can add modifiers just with a click, and it's all set up, and you can go add, you can add another key if you want multiple keys to bind to the same action. It's just such a pleasant experience, okay. So we'll go right, and now for shoot, I wanna set that off from the mouse. I think, does this work? Yeah, left mouse button, perfect, okay. Die, let me just go spacebar. I just wanna have something for debug purposes. So I can go ahead and close this, save, and all of my input is ready to go. Now what I want to do is add some logic. So, 
I'll just right click on the player node. Oh, one thing I should probably do before that, just to keep it simple, I'm going to rename this animation mode node to animation. You'll see why in a second. Okay. So I'll just right click on the player node and attach a script. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to declare some variables for the class. All right, so we have some default methods. This ready is called as an initializer once the, the object is created and added to the scene tree. So what I want to do is I want to give this a default animation. So I just use this dollar sign to access a child node. And as you can see, this is populated for me. So it understands that animation is the child node that I'm looking for. If this was named something else, it would auto complete. So I'll say play. And then it says, alrighty, which animation do you want to play? Well, let's start off idling, right? And there we go. Actually, let's, let's save this and give it a go. So remember before we were playing it and the animation was not doing anything. Here we are. We're idling, right? How cool is that? Okay. So now I'm going to do a lot of typing, but basically just to take the, the key input. Okay. So this process occurs every frame and I want to check my input. Now I want to know, did I currently press a button in this frame? Now, as you can see, it auto completes with all these options. These are the bindings that I set up before. Again, how cool is that? So if I just hit the left, then I want to walk left. I probably don't need the running variable at the moment. Yeah, let's get rid of that. So just only thing we really care about is whether we're facing left or right. Okay, so currently, you know what? I won't talk, I'll just demonstrate it. So, whoops, here we are. Now if I hit A, I'm going left. Now if I take A off, I'm now idling facing left. Again, A, A off. Cool. So I'll just go ahead and code up the rest of these. There we go. So, as you can see here, we can then use the left variable to determine which direction we should face. Let's give this a go. All right, so currently we're facing to the right. So if I click and it doesn't matter where I click, bang, we shoot. Okay, let's walk to the left, shoot. Isn't that neat? I just think that's so cool. Let's finish this off. Goodbye character. We're going to kill you. All right, judgment day. So we're facing this way. We're walking, walking, and now, oh, we die. But our character has the last laugh because we can get up and shoot. Anyway, look, I just wanted to share that because really, truly, Really, truly, this is just such a, such a fun tool to work with. And it's completely free and open source. Okay, so, I hope you enjoyed this. All the best, and I will see you again soon. Bye!